Hello, it's Dr. Patricia Coughlin talking to you again about how to be the best therapist you can possibly be. And as I mentioned in a post last week, knowing your why and coming from your why is of crucial importance to doing work of depth and significance that's really gratifying to you, as well as a true contribution to the lives of others. So people contacted me and asked me, well, how do you find out if you don't really know what your why is? And how can you help other people discover their why? You know, Simon Sinek, who I mentioned, because he did that fabulous TED Talk and then a book about knowing your why, um, really suggests that this is a deeply emotional and really a limbic phenomenon. It's something you're going to discover that's already in you. It's not something you're going to figure out or create neocortically. So it really is about connecting to your most deeply held beliefs and values, your deepest feelings and longings, and they've really been there since childhood. So think about what lights you up. What kinds of activities do you get involved in where you completely lose track of time, where you feel like you're your best self, using your strengths and gifts uh, in ways, again, that are meaningful. If you have a hard time coming up with things like this, then ask your friends and family what they know about how you contribute to them in their life, what your strengths and capacities are. And there are also some wonderful, uh, you know, sort of tests or um, what do you call those things, like inventories that you can take to, to really help you with this. And one of the best is called the VIA. It's the uh, your signature strengths. And it's on the authentic happiness.com or maybe .org. Um, it comes out of the University of Pennsylvania. It's Martin Seligman's website because, of course, he found that the happiest people were people who were accurate about their strengths and they played to their strengths and found ways to do work and to interact with others that, again, really highlight their strengths. So taking this inventory can really help you or patients and clients that you're working with who, who seem to be somewhat clueless about what their uh, strengths and gifts really are. And one of the things I love about the VIA is that it really gets to things like creating beauty in the world or uh, speaking up for justice. Um, it, it really is getting to essence qualities. It's not about you should be a plumber you know, or a journalist. It really is looking at those core capacities and gifts that really can create all kinds of what's. So the what you do hopefully is a reflection of and is internally consistent with your why. Another exercise that you can do with yourself or with others is just to dig down seven layers. So let's say again, you're a, psycho, a psychologist, a psychotherapist, and you ask yourself, why? Why do I do that? And again, you might start with, I wanna help people. Well, why is that important? Uh, because it makes me feel like I and making a contribution. Why is that important? And keep digging down. In fact, this morning in my meditation, I got, I think, to the deepest level of my why. Up until now, I knew that I was somebody who really was motivated by and lit up by really understanding myself and others in a very, very deep way so that we could discover our own unique gifts and talents and contribute them to the world. But this morning I got to an even deeper level with that, which is love. That at the bottom of it, my why, what motivates me and lights me up, is about how to create love, um, how to connect with my capacity to give and receive love. And then in my case also, how to help myself and others remove barriers 
to that love. So you can just keep digging and you'll be surprised what you can find. Since again, your why is so fundamental to who you are, and in a way it's always been there, it really is connected to emotion, to felt experience. And so go back to your childhood and think about the greatest pains and struggles and sufferings that you had as a child, as well as your dreams. And I think these are both going to give you some really important information about your why. You know, the other day I was watching an interview with Stephen Colbert and Anderson Cooper, and then it also reminded me of Billy Crystal. All of these guys lost their father um, suddenly and tragically when they were only about 10 years old. And so in two cases, Stephen Colbert and uh, Billy Crystal, they ended up developing the capacity to be funny and to make their mother laugh in order to bring some joy and, again, laughter back into their lives that, you know, had been quite shattered by this sudden loss. So what, again, looks like a tragedy can often be the seeds of some deeply felt meaning and purpose. If you also look at what your dreams were for what you wanted to be when you grew up, like at the age of five or ten, and then look at are there ways, you know, there's information in this that you can also use to discover your why. So I've talked in some of my other interviews and uh, posts about some of the uh, difficulties and challenges and struggles I had growing up. Uh, my mother had bipolar illness. Of course, we used to call that manic depression. And uh, there's just no doubt that without that experience, I don't think I would be so interested in having such a deep understanding of human beings and what makes them operate and, and why she behaved uh, the way she did and also seeing how it impacted me and other members of my family. And it also turns out that I was quite sick as a child and often isolated, uh, either in the hospital or even at home, sort of in a sick room. And while that was painful in many ways, it also gave me the gift of developing a really rich inner life. I mean, I am never bored. <laughs> I can keep myself a uh, very good company. But again, because I didn't have, you know, TV, video games, uh, Netflix or anything else to distract me or to take me out of myself, I developed a very rich inner life and really value that and am sure that that's one of the things that helps me be a really good therapist because I understand myself and others in a very deep way. So uh, when it comes to dreams, I wanted to be a ballerina when I was about five and then I wanted to be an astronaut when I was about 10. So obviously I don't do either one of those things, but if, if there are kernels of those things that I can see in the life that I've created. Uh, a ballerina, I mean, it's all about self-expression uh, as well as creating beauty, which is another thing I really love doing uh, in artwork and so on. But it, it's a way of expressing and sharing something uh, deeply emotional and fundamental. It's a way of connecting with myself and others. And also to be on stage, which I actually do now, right? I'm on stage sharing knowledge and skill that I'm passionate about, and it helps me connect to others. So there's that seed from childhood. And while I am not a space explorer out there, I am not an astronaut, but I really do love exploring deep inner space and, you know, not having a map and uh, discovering along with my patient how their uh, seeming difficulties um, actually make sense that we can 
discover uh, what that's all about and what it reveals about them. So I hope these tips can help you and your patients begin to get clear about that why, why you're here. And when you do, then they'll see all kinds of hows uh, to express that. And the what you do is simply the result. It's simply the product. And so that gives you lots of flexibility. So for a long time, my what was doing intensive individual psychotherapy. But in the last number of years, that has waned as other what's have emerged. Writing books. So what do you do? I write books. I speak. I teach. I train uh, the next generation of therapists. And now I have a YouTube channel. And I'm sharing that way. So you can see you can have all different kinds of what's that can emerge from your why. And again, it gives you a lot of flexibility and ways to keep growing and expanding in creative ways. So uh, I'd love to hear how this is helping you, what you're discovering about your why, and if you have other tips for how to get clear about your why and how to help your patients do so. Thanks. Bye-bye.